Now, let's study the exponential distribution. An exponential distribution is defined by this density function. The density function is this lambda, it's a constant, exponential, negative lambda, x. And this random variable takes no negative values. Okay, and lambda is a constant that is positive. Okay, that's it. So if you plot this, the density function looks like x and density function looks like just exponentially decaying function, just exponential function, right? Something like this. So when x is 0, then this value should be lambda. And it converges to 0 as x goes to infinity. And the cumulative distribution function of this is defined as this probability, right? Remember? And in this case, it's a continuous random variable that takes no negative value, so it will be this. And the result is uh, this. Okay, you should try to check this calculation. Okay, and this exponential distribution is actually closely related to the Poisson distribution. Remember, Poisson distribution. So let's consider an example, uh, which is radioactive decay, for example. So we have an atom and it decays and emits some radioactive uh, particles at some point and it decays into another isotope within certain amount of time. Okay, let's say lambda is the number of decay per second per sec okay then average number of decays within t seconds so average number of decay decays in t sec seconds is lambda times t. It's proportional to the duration of time and this lambda is the rate of decay so this should be the average number. Okay, But actual number of decay by time t is a random variable. You know, it, this we don't know when actually decay a decay happens it's a it's a random process so this can be considered as a random variable and since a decay decays are uh, rare events so this may be considered as a Poisson random variable so Poisson random variable with this average number of decays is this. So the parameter for the Poisson distribution in this case is lambda t. Okay, so that means the probability that this random variable takes some integer value, non-negative integer value, is given by this probability mass function, lambda t to the power of n an exponential negative lambda t and n factorial. So this was the probability uh, function, mass function for the Poisson distribution when the parameter is lambda t. Okay, as we have studied before last week, the expectation value of this Poisson 
random variable should be lambda t and you should check it and in particular the pr probability that the number of decay by time t is 0 is given by exponential of negative lambda t okay now let's switch a view viewpoint so we are we were uh, modeling this phenomenon of radio decay radioactive decay through as using this random variable the number of decays but now we consider the time until the first decay okay so uh, maybe we should plot like this time and decay okay so up to some point there is no decay at some point there may be a decay one decay and and we can wait for some what some time again oh, this shouldn't be upward but uh, it should be like this and then some decay happens and then some decay happens maybe so this duration is a random variable actually you know and it's a continuous random variable because it's time okay so let's say uh, the time until the first decay is represented by this random variable t lambda t so the probability that this time is greater than some given number some given number of seconds so we want to calculate this uh, probability but this is actually uh, same as this probability number of decays up to time t is zero right so let's say this is t so t is greater than so uh, okay so this random variable large t is greater than small t means up to this point there was no decay okay so n of t is zero and after that point there was a decay so there should uh, this probability should be equal to this probability which is this so this one okay so now we consider the complement of this so the probability that this large t is less than or equal to some fixed number that is 1 minus t greater than small t but this is exponential of minus lambda t but this is actually the cumulative distribution function of the exponential distribution that means if you differentiate this oh, with respect to t then you have the density function so if you differentiate this you have lambda exponential negative lambda t so in this way the Poisson distribution and the exponential distribution are closely related to each other
So if you look at this part, okay, lambda t was number of decays. Decays per second. Okay, so it has a unit of one over second. And if we measure this time in seconds, then lambda t has no unit. So t has a unit of time. So lambda t has no unit. So 1 over sec times sec, it's just 1. So there's no unit. So if you invert lambda, so 1 over lambda, it has a unit of second. So what does this, so this means, this has a meaning of time. What this means is the average uh, duration until the first decay. So that should be the expectation value of this random variable t. And you can actually check this just by calculating the expectation value of t using the density function. Now, here's an example of the exponential distribution. This table shows the observed frequency of uh, decays of thorium. Okay. In total, there are 766 decades. In total, uh, in 2,496 seconds. Okay. So this means so we were observing the number of decays, like this. So successive decay goes like this. So one decay, two decays, three decays, four decays. And so this goes on like this, and up to 766. So 766 in 2,496 seconds. So that's 2,496 seconds. Okay. And <coughs> this is the time interval between, uh, between two successive decays. So that means these time intervals. Okay. So when the time interval was between 0 and 0 0.5, there were 101 decays. So you know, in every those steps, when this length duration between two successive decays was between this range, then there were this many decays. And similarly, when the rate interval was between 0 0.5 seconds to 1 second, there were 98 decays, and so on. So this is the histogram. And from this data, you can calculate the average duration between two successive, average interval between two successive decays. So from that average, you can estimate the parameter lambda for the exponential distribution. Then using that lambda obtained from the experiment, you can calculate the probability that the decay occurs within a certain length of interval. For, for example, 
uh, once you determine this lambda you can calculate according to the exponential distribution that uh, the interval is between 0.5 and 1 second by integrating the density function right and if you multiply this probability with the total number of decays then you have expected frequency of the decay within that interval okay so this is this column shows the expected frequency cal calculated from an exponential distribution so if you compare these expect expected frequencies with uh, observed frequency they are very close actually right so there are no decays more than uh, with more than 30 seconds of intervals and 2 4 and versus 6 32 versus 28 59 versus 54 they are very close so this is this shows the applicability of the exponential distribution for this phenomenon uh, radioactive decays of thorium